That sound you hear is a simple counter. A clicker that retailers used to use to measure how many potential customers might pass by a possible store location based on the volume of passing cars. After testing out a few corners, an entrepreneur store owner would pick the location with the highest traffic volume and build a store. Nowadays, a convenience retailer can consult a variety of sources, like the U.S. Census Bureau, Nielsen, IRI, and NACS. But 51 years ago, that data didn't exist, and retailers had to rely on counters and their gut. On today's episode, we're going to do something a little different from our normal format. We're going to look at the advancement of the convenience industry with the use of data to make smart decisions. We'll also talk about what the future of convenience will look like and how it's going to get there. Welcome to Convenience Matters, a weekly podcast devoted to the convenience industry. I'm Carolyn Schneer with Nax. This special episode is made possible by the Fuels Institute. 2020 marks the 50th anniversary of the Nax State of the Industry Report, or SOI Report for short. For half a century, the Nax State of the Industry Report has served as the premier annual benchmarking tool for the convenience and fuel retailing industry, providing advanced analytics and strategic insights to help retailers chart the course for their business. I spoke with my colleague, Lori Stillman, Nax Vice President of Research, and asked her to provide some background on the SOI Report. The Nax SOI Report is an annual compilation of industry's performance metrics and KPIs that allow any retailer to understand how they're performing versus their peer group or the retailers in general across a variety of metrics. So if you're thinking about my financial performance, my fuel sales, my inside sales, categories, store operating expenses, retailers can go deep on any of those topics to understand and set priorities for future strategy. One particular hallmark of the convenience industry is its unique collaboration that's virtually unseen in any other business sector. The NAX SOI report is built each year through anonymous data submissions from retailers big and small across the industry. This transparency across the industry's leadership allows the opportunity to compare their business to see how they stack up. So I asked Lori, what is it that makes the SOI report data unique? I love this question. Um, I think what makes the data super unique is the fact that it really represents collaboration across the industry. I've spent 30 years in the data business, and this is the only industry that I've ever been in where retailers aren't just sharing what's selling, but they're also sharing a lot of the back of the house information as well. And when we're able to marry that together, it allows us to start to really focus on the value of driving efficiencies and behavior changes. And that's not anything uh, that I've ever seen available in any other industry. Super unique. And that's not just the NAC's perspective. Retailers agree too. Here's Andy Jones, president and CEO of Sprint Food Stores. The, the, the really neat thing about the convenience store industry is how collaborative it is. Um, the, the, the bigger retailers, the, the, the best of breed retailers are so open with, with how they do things. And, and it's... It's simple in a way. It's crazy hard in a way. Um, But I think the reason they're so open with how they do a lot of things is to make the whole industry better because they know that it will improve their business if, if we're all better. And that's the essence of this report, to make the industry better. Around the same time Neil Armstrong was taking his first steps on the moon, Nax was creating the first ever SOI report. It was a simple three-page table titled Annual Report of Stores, Sales, and Profits of 1969. Compare that with the present-day report, which is 250 pages. I spoke with Jeff Leonard, NAC's Vice President of Strategic Industry Initiatives, to learn more about the history of the NAC's SOI report. The whole point of that early report was to show all our suppliers that we were somebody, that um, we should get some respect if you want to look at that old Rodney Dangerfield line. I don't get no respect. The idea was that we were treated like a a tag-along to the grocery industry. That first SOI told others that we were somebody. We were a $1.1 billion industry. And to put that $1.1 billion in perspective today, our industry is now $654 billion. Meanwhile, that $1.1 billion, 
That's what we give every year to local charities. And how did NACS help drive the growth within our industry? The answer, when we return. This special episode of Convenience Matters is brought to you by the Fuels Institute. The Fuels Institute is dedicated to delivering unbiased research so that the market can deliver the best in fuel and vehicle options to consumers. Through commissioned research, conferences, and working groups, the good folks at the Fuels Institute bring together the entire transportation energy industry to facilitate and identify opportunities and challenges associated with new technologies. Learn more about them at fuelsinstitute.org. You you always kind of know what you're doing well. But a lot of times you don't know the misses until you see them on paper. And so this has really been um, kind of self-evident when we get the data of where we need to go. Welcome back. That was Kevin Smart, CEO and president of Quick Check Food Stores, one of the most thoughtful operators I know. Headquartered in Bonham, Texas, this people-focused company's motto is leave them better. So Kevin, do you compare yourself to others? All the time. Yeah, yeah, all the time. I think benchmarking is critical, kind of telling yourself the truth. And, um, you know, you always want to pat yourself on the back where you're doing well, and it's hard to kind of say where you're not. But but what we have found is if you can do that, that's really the difference maker for being a better company. The SOI report is more than just a book. It's a source of information for retailers to take a look outside their business, outside their gut, and far away from that car accounting clicker using a broader lens that will help guide their businesses today and into the future. What is benchmarking and what do you do with it? I asked Jamie Goff, research analyst with Nax, to provide her perspective on how you gain that competitive edge. So... Benchmarking is essentially discovering what the best performance out there is and then using that to identify gaps in your own organization's processes in order to gain a competitive advantage and take advantage of you know what you're doing well and use what you might not be doing so well as an opportunity to really uh, boost your business. Essentially, you're given an opportunity when you're benchmarking to articulate your strengths and suggest areas that you might want to improve in your business. It's essentially like you're competing on paper. But what happens when you really dive in there, when you apply it, when you use it, when you lay out the book on your table and you look at your sales and you look at someone else's and you compare those and you take the industry average and now all of a sudden you realize like, yeah, I'm doing really well or not so much. What happens when you zoom out and you take a look at what that data is actually saying to you? What makes the beauty of the data that NAX provides is when we marry that with the financial data, it starts to help us identify the financial behavior of making changes to categories, to streamlining operations, to paying people more. And how does that manifest itself through the organization so that you can start to dimensionalize the value of taking action uh, and prioritizing that which is going to have the biggest impact on the business. That's the view from 30,000 feet. Now we're going to zoom in and see what it's like on the ground. So what does that mean for you and your business? I talked to industry veteran Eva Grimm of Dim Dandy Convenience Stores in Moorhead City, North Carolina, and asked her perspective to tell us what it means to her. Sometimes I get motivated by thinking, well, we just did this and this looks pretty good. But if in our own vacuum, sometimes you really don't know how good your good is. I mean, is it really good um, until you see it in the context of, well, what is what is the benchmark? Is this normal or is this not normal? You're making money. A lot of times you're thinking, well, I'm paying all my bills and I'm making a little extra profit and everything is good until you look at some of the data in some cases and, and say, wait a minute, my good is actually not great. And that's ultimately why the NAC State of the Industry Report was created. To celebrate the industry, and to provide convenience store operators with benchmarks and insights so they can sleep better at night in the comfort of knowing that their business is doing okay. The solution is knowing what everyone else is doing and how you too can be great. What I like about NAC State of the Industry data is that rather than just giving you an overall benchmark to say, well, this is the average you can compare to it, When you find something that does not match up with you or makes you really question how you're doing and why you're not doing as well, there's the resource behind it to go dig in further. 
and to say, where is that coming from? Because an average on its own is certainly not as valuable as the data that Nax has behind it. We've covered where convenience has been. So where is this evolving industry going? With competition coming in very different retail forms than in 1970 when this data compilation first surfaced, retailers need to stay smart, stay on their game, stay ahead of their competitors. Right? What's next? So I asked Lori Stillman again, and she gave a pretty cool answer. Well, I don't think the future for our industry, quite honestly, has ever been brighter. And and I don't say that lightly because I think in a time of retail disruption and everywhere that you look, um, I think there's a lot of folks who look at physical retail with a lot of questions in their eyes. But there's not an industry that has the opportunity to touch half the U.S. population every single day. And in and of itself, in a time where technology continues to grow, We know people crave interactions, and we are better poised than anybody to be that bright smile at the start of a day when you're getting a cup of coffee, uh, a great place to go and connect with friends and get a healthy lunch or grab a pizza on your way home from work. But our ability to touch consumers every single day, I think first and foremost, gives us permission to have a super bright future because people want convenience. They want accessibility. Uh, We have opportunities to you know, look at home delivery. And I think that there's a number of industry players who are, who are looking at that and doing some great tests and learns. We equally have opportunities to be the source of trips. Imagine an Amazon locker in the back of a store where rather than that package being left on your doorstep, you're now popping in to get your order for the day. Uh, and then obviously that allows us to build some market baskets around that. So the opportunity is ours. We have the traffic, we have the locations, we have the purpose. Lori makes great points. You can see the differences in convenience stores throughout the country. They are woven together with the fabric of the communities they're in. They mimic the speed, the economics, and the people. That's what makes this retail channel unique, diverse, and ripe with opportunity. What about the retailers that make up this industry? In Texas, in the hills of Georgia, and North Carolina? What does the future look like for them? I asked Kevin, Andy, and Eva what their future is for their businesses. For us, food and technology, right? So we've had a big push to get better at fresh food done in the kitchen, in our stores. Um, and and so, but controlling uh, labor, um, <clears throat> food costs is, is critical. But then how do we bring in technology at something we can afford, but that allows us to communicate to the consumer that what we're doing fresh, let them order it before they get to the store, delivery, everything, right? So we think those two things really are are the future for us and I think for the industry. The future of convenience, what, what I see it is we've got to continue to be everything to everyone. We, we have got to look after every different type customer that we have and know what they want and and provide it for them. I see it really the independent operator killing it by bringing back and continuing to realize that the biggest treasure they have is that feel when you walk in that store and you feel it. It's not, it is intangible in many ways. That feel that says, hey, this week, um, we really want to do something special for customers together, or it's this person's birthday who's been coming here for a long time. How do you keep evolving, keep growing, stay relevant in a rapidly shrinking retail world? I think Eva says it best with a quote from a movie, if you can believe it, Seabiscuit. Yep. The one about the horse. And I believe the exact quote is, you don't throw a whole life away just because it's banged up a little. And we have all of these slightly banged up, not so perfect stores that have incredible personality, incredible heart. And if we get better at actually paying attention to what we need to put in there and how we show it, I think there's some really cool stuff. We started this show talking about a solitary store owner with a clicker and a dream. You don't have to stand on the side of the road anymore to know what's good for business. There's data that can help you, and you don't have to do it alone. 
There's a whole industry and association of smart people ready and willing to share, just like we've done for the past 50 years. for listening to Convenience Matters, brought to you by Nex, written and directed by Lindsay Buchanan and by Human Factor, sponsored by the Fuels Institute, and special thanks to all of our guests for lending their time. And if you love our weekly podcast, subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. For more information, visit convenience.org and conveniencematters.com.